All right, so I've got those two sheets of puff pastry. Hmm, what should I make? You know what? Something sweet, something savory, something puffy. Yes, that's what I'm gonna make. My name's Jose. I'm a restaurant manager, a chef, and a dad to two wonderful girls. Over the years, I've realized that we're used to using cake mixes that, quite frankly, taste like cardboard. So I realized it's time for a revolution. So sit back, take notes, and get ready for a pastry revolution. Hey guys, welcome to Pastry Revolution. So last week we made some puff pastry, and today we're going to use it to make something savory, something sweet, and something puffy. We're going to go ahead and use two sheets of puff pastry, so when you do make this, make all these recipes, make sure you double the recipe on the puff pastry. Make two separate sheets like that, you have enough space to go ahead and make your two sheets. Now, let's go make some stuff. All right, so we start off by searing off two chicken breasts that have been liberally salted and peppered. We're just going to sear them off about three minutes per side. Okay, so the chicken will be raw on the inside, but that's okay because it's going to cook in the oven when you, when you assemble the chicken pot pie. This way, your chicken pot pie will have that chicken flavor that we all love in chicken pot pie. Using the same pan, we're going to go ahead and melt our butter. You want to use the same pan so you can get those drippings from the chicken fat. Once your butter is melted, go ahead and add your minced onion and saute it to its translucent. Once your onions are translucent, we're going to go ahead and add our flour and mix it well. You want to make sure the flour is well dissolved before adding any additional ingredients. This will be the base of our roux. We will now add our half and half and bring this mixture to a boil. I like to add some demi-gloss to it, chicken demi-gloss to be specific, and then I also add salt and pepper. If you don't have some demi-gloss or your own stuff, you can go ahead and use bouillon cubes or consomme. We're going to go ahead and combine this well using a whisk. Remove my sauce from the heat and that's when I add the herbs to Provence. You don't want to add it while the sauce is boiling otherwise it destroys the flavors of the herbs. To assemble our chicken pot pie we add our diced chicken, our diced potatoes and followed by peas and carrots. I like to use frozen ones because they just tend to have the best flavor. Lastly add your sauce to the casserole dish. Now at first it won't all fit, it has to sink to the bottom in order for the sauce to all fit in. You want to use all of it, just give it a little shake. For the top crust, we roll out one third of the sheet we made earlier of the puff pastry on a lightly fired surface. We're going to roll it out to a square that measures roughly 10 by 10 inches. We then place this right on top of the casserole dish. Now for the overhang, you're going to go ahead and try and pinch it on one end so it has a light but tight fit. Make sure you cut three vent holes on top of the crust to allow some steam to get out as the sauce boils. We then brush the top with some egg wash to give it a nice sheen. We put this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. We will then cover this in aluminum foil and cook it for an additional 20 minutes. This will allow the crust not to get too brown. This here is a chicken pot pie. Just dig right into it, into that puff pastry that's perfectly crisp. You can hear it right here. Oh, amazing. Serve this up with this rich, delicious chicken based sauce. And enjoy it with your family. So for the palmiers, we're going to start out by making our vanilla sugar. Our vanilla sugar is going to be made with a real vanilla bean. This right here is a vanilla bean. Inside are tiny little seeds that are where all the flavor of the vanilla comes from. We're going to split this bean lengthwise. Be careful with it not to split it in half. Go slow and steady. Using the back of a knife, lightly scrape off the tiny little seeds inside the vanilla bean pod. Put light pressure. You want to avoid getting the fibrous bits of the pod itself. Now if you look closely, you can see those tiny little seeds are all of the flavor the vanilla bean is. Now we're going to add the seeds in the pod to the sugar on a mixing bowl with a paddle attachment and we're going to mix them to the lowest speed for about 5-7 to seven minutes to make sure that vanilla bean is really thoroughly in there. Once mixed, we're going to remove the vanilla bean pod. Now if you look closely, you can see the tiny little seeds that are in the sugar itself. That's where all the flavor is. Right, so now we put our vanilla bean sugar onto our surface. And we're going to go ahead and place the remaining two-thirds of the puff pastry on top of this. The reason we're rolling out the dough onto the sugar is because you want that sugar to really get in the dough. If you just sprinkle it on top when it's ready to bake, you're going to end up with a caramel mess, which is something you do not want with pommiers. This way, the inside will caramelize, as the outside will caramelize as well, giving you a nice crunch and nice flavor. Afterwards, we're going to go ahead and do a single book fold, so like a trifold. We're going to refrigerate it for about 30 minutes, and then we're going to roll it out one last time, and I'll show you how to shape that up. 
Right, so we rolled this dough out onto additional vanilla bean sugar to a rectangle that measures about 18 by 10 inches. Now, to fold and face shape the pommiers, you're going to do a double book fold. So one end towards the center, the other with the other end. Uh, make sure that they're even. You want to make sure they're even. Afterwards, we're going to fold those pieces in half, like so. Make sure you do the same thing to the top. And then, we're going to go ahead and fold these two uh, rows onto each other. They're going to overlap. That's going to form like almost like a heart shape. I'll show you what they look like once I cut them. Now what I do to make this easier to manage, I cut the rope, this pommier rope, in half. And then I cut each individual piece to a thickness of approximately a quarter inch. Now the ending result is going to be this beautiful heart shape that looks just fabulous, like that. That right there is a pommier. We're going to place the pommiers on a parchment lined paper and we're going to bake them at 425 degrees for about 8 minutes. Afterwards we're going to flip them over and cook them an additional 7 minutes. The ending result will be crisp with a slight taste of vanilla. And these are your finished pommiers, fresh out of the oven, delicious, fantastic. Oh, let them rest five minutes so they can cool down slightly. Okay, to start making the apple filling, we're gonna go ahead and melt a stick of butter, that's four ounces of butter, and, and we're gonna melt it over low heat. Once the butter melts, we're going to go ahead and add vanilla bean sugar to the mixture. We're going to bring it to a boil. Once it reaches an amber color, we're going to drizzle on that honey. Once it reaches a dark amber color, we're going to go ahead and add our apples to it. Now, for this recipe, I'm using Golden Delicious and Granny Smith apples. Why? Granny Smith apples hold their shape and they're slightly tart, and Golden Delicious apples are sweet, but they tend to break apart. So, with a blend of these two apples, we end up with a nice balance of flavor and texture. The apples cooked, we're going to go ahead and add our cinnamon to this and mix it in well. We're going to continue cooking until the apples are fork tender. When your apples are fork tender, that means you'll be able to stab an apple piece and it'll go straight through without hesitation or without pressure. At this point, we're going to add our half and half that has been mixed with our cornstarch. The cornstarch will help thicken the sauce and the half and half will give it a nice creamy mouthfeel. We're going to bring it to a boil and we're going to continue boiling it for about another minute until the sauce thickens. We will then set this aside and let it cool down to room temperature before we add it to our puff pastry. I rolled my pastry dough out to a rectangle that measured about 20 by 24 inches. I then cut out about 5 by 5 inch squares. You put the filling in the center and then you're gonna, we're going to go ahead and brush the edges along with, uh, with some water to make sure the dough sticks to each other. Afterwards we return the flip the dough over to encase the uh, apple filling. Before we bake them we Snip a little vent hole so the steam comes out with them brushing with egg wash. We're going to bake them in a 400 degree oven for about 15 minutes and then these are the finished turnovers. And there you have it folks. That's how you can make a complete meal with a puff pastry. You can make an entree, a chicken pot pie, you can make a dessert, the uh, apple turnovers, and a little snack for the palmiers. It's amazing, they're delicious, it's all homemade, and it's incredibly inexpensive to make for a family. Y'all enjoy, folks, and see you next time on Patriot Revolution.